Hi everyone and welcome back. I know it's been quite some time since I posted a video, but now I'm back and I'm trying to upload more. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering how I achieved this effect right here. Now, let me show you a quick way to do that. So let's jump straight into Unreal Engine. I'm using the version 5.2 because 5.3 doesn't have specific plugins that I use. So I'm just going to wait a little more until I switch to that one. Now you can see that I've placed this car here, but obviously you can animate whatever you want, like people, trees or objects falling, something like that, you know. And after you drop your asset, it's very simple from here. So what you need to do is create on this plus icon, cinematic, cine camera actor, just drag and drop it in the scene. Then you can see a window pops up right here, which gives you the preview of that camera. Then you can go into the perspective tab here and choose the cine camera actor. Then you want to place your camera to the shot you want to all the needed settings in here. If you want to guide to these settings, you can watch my other video. I'll link it right here in the corner. Okay, so after you set up your camera, you need to animate that object to be able to create that effect because now it is a static one and it will just look static in the final render. So we need to create a level sequence and to do that just click on this cinematic tab and choose add level sequence. I'm just gonna name it car motion and click save and you can see that it already popped up here and opened it automatically. I'm just gonna move that far away and here in the sequencer we need to track our camera so click on the track button actor to sequencer and here search for cine camera actor now these are way too many frames for this shot so i'm just gonna drag this slider to 60 maybe also this is the playback these two well, we need to click again on the track button, actor to sequencer, and you're gonna search for your car object or your your object that you want to animate. And click, click on it, and then it will track it. And then, in the transform tab, you can add keyframes to the animation. So, I'm just gonna go to the zero, se uh, zero frame, and to be able to animate uh, faster, I'm gonna click on this button here and it'll give me another preview. So here I can preview my camera and on the right tab I can adjust the position. So I'm just gonna move it backwards a bit. Like this. Make sure that it's set on the ground and then click on this little plus button to create a keyframe. Then I'm gonna drag the slider to let's say the 25th frame. Then I'm gonna move the car to about here. And then I'm gonna adjust the position so it matches the road because it's a really bumpy one. And after I set my position, we're gonna click again on this plus button and it'll, it'll create another keyframe. Now, if we were to go back and hit play button, you can see we've did a, we did a little animation. So now let's go to the 50th frame and move the car even further. Just gonna drag the slider for the playback and also the frames. So now let's go back and hit play let's see what we did isn't that cool okay so now if you drag this slider you can see frame by frame where the car is positioned so you choose the frame that you want to blur so I'm gonna choose 29 for example remember that because we're gonna need to go click on this button to open the movie render queue click on this button to open the settings for the for the render now here you choose where to save it. I just saved it on desktop and here you can delete this and choose a name for it. 
I'm just gonna say car one. Then in here, the output resolution that you want. So I'm just gonna say 3440 by 1440p. And then if you go down here, if you check this box to use custom playback range, you can choose to render one frame or how many you want by typing here, let's say I wanted 29. So I'm gonna type here 29 for the start frame and end frame 30. So it'll render only one frame. Then here you can choose the method that you want to render in. It works with both lumen and path tracing. So if you click on settings, you can choose the path tracing, for example. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna do lumen. And I'm just gonna delete the JPEG format and export it as a PNG or which format you want. And then we also need to add the anti-aliasing. Now, these are some important settings that you need to take into account. The spatial sample count is kind of the quality of the frame. So for Lumen, it's okay to set it to about five. And the temporal sample count is much more important for motion blur. So this I'm gonna set to 100. And these settings work for path chasing good as well. But for path chasing, I suggest if this doesn't really work, just put here 50 and here 10 or something. Or even higher than that if your PC can handle. You also need to click on render warm up frames because if you do not do that, it will create like a ghosting effect and it's gonna look awful. So this is gonna calculate the render bef the frames before the render and it will give you a smoother result. And if you check this button, it's gonna warm up the frames before the one that you selected. So for mine, it's gonna render 28 frames before the 29th frame that I chose. <laughs> Jesus, so many numbers. <laughs> and the render warm up count you can leave the, by default. So click accept and then render your shot. So this is the shot that I got and I think it looks very good. Now, you've probably seen those cool renders where the car is in focus and the background is blurred. Now let's try to do that. So let's create another camera actor. I'm gonna drop it in my scene and let's open the preview for that one. I'm just gonna place it like here and then what I'll do is I'll select the scene camera actor, right click, then attach to and I'm gonna search here for SUV which is my actor. So after I attached the camera, I did my settings for the camera and then if I press play, you're gonna see that the camera moves with the car. I just saw that the car doesn't go straight on the road, but it's fine. Now if you wanna add that camera here so that we can render the shot, you need to move this slider to the 75th second and click here on the camera cuts plus camera, new binding and choose your camera and it'll create, it'll create another clip here that I'm gonna drag until the 150 seconds. And then what you can do is you can click on the car animation and just drag it on the right. Now if you press play, it's there. And if we go to the second camera, go back the animation is gone but you can you can always just slide this and put whatever you want so now I'm just gonna go back to my cine camera actor 4 to choose a second that I want to render so I'm just gonna click around here and render my shot using the same settings so this is the final render but if you want to create a more strong effect, 
you need to lower the FPS. So I'm just gonna set it to 25. Okay, so this is the shot that I made. What do you think of it? Doesn't it look cool? So you can continue doing this with how many objects you want and how many shots you want. So unlimited possibilities. Okay guys, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you did, make sure to subscribe and like to support me. And I will see you next time with another video. Have a great day. Goodbye.